Hello again, friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bag, and once again, I'm here with Didier Tisson. We're talking about a wealth mindset. We know that God has given us a promise from His Word that He would want us to prosper in all things, even as our soul prospers, and that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And sometimes people say, you know, but why do we need money? And it's really not all about money. It's got to do with the mindset. But the Bible does tell us in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19, that money answers everything. Well, what has money got to do with preaching the gospel? Well, the Bible tells us once again, God gives a promise in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. You shall remember the Lord your God. It is He who gives you power to get wealth. Why? That He may establish His covenant. Now, we know that Jesus said, For this purpose has the Son of Man come, to seek and save that which was lost. That salvation of mankind, redeeming man back to his Father, redeeming us from sin into a life of enjoying eternal life with God, includes in it salvation from sickness and disease, from poverty and lack, into God's provision of health and His prosperity and supply. Now, evidently, to preach that gospel, the Bible says, takes wealth. And not only is God not against wealth, but He gives you power to get it. Now, when we hear all the promises and we see that God does indeed provide every need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus, He makes grace abound that we always have all sufficiency in all things and abundance for every good work. When we bring the tithe to the storehouse, the windows of heaven are open and we are blessed in a way that we cannot even contain it. We see all these scriptures of God being more than enough and a super abundant God, exceedingly abundantly above what we ask or think, according to that which is at work in us. We can sometimes look at our lives and wonder, well, I see all the scriptures. I agree there with them. They sound great when I speak them. My faith grows for it. But what's holding me back? How come I'm not seeing it happen in my life? And very often, it's because of a mindset that traps us in an old way of thinking and traps us in an old way of life. Remember, again, Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And so I can work on that inner man. I can work on that inner thinking. And I do that through the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And so it's coming out of that trap of a poverty mindset. And Lydia, that's what you were pressing on uh, in the last two days is when we talk about, very often someone thinks about a poverty mindset and then being rich, thinking that's the answer. And then you brought it up, even rich isn't enough. We need to walk as a wealth mindset. That's right. And our belief system becomes our identity. So yeah. we will exhibit what we think. We will exhibit what we believe uh, in our actions, in our behavior, in our decision making. Yes. And if we look at a poverty mindset, even as at a rich mindset, you don't want to have one of those belief systems to be your identity. Mm -hmm. You want right. to have the wealth mindset to be your identity yes. because that's the way God has designed us to operate. Right. Knowing that it doesn't matter in which situation we are, God will provide for us in that situation. Amen. And He will not only provide what we only need for ourselves in that situation, but also in overflow for others so that we can be a blessing unto others. I think that's the key. Yes. Is that blessed to be a blessing. Again, you know, a poverty mindset is someone who never has enough. They're yeah. always thinking about what they should have and, and they don't yet have. But even a rich mindset, they could get to a place where, okay, they've got everything they need yeah. and they're always comfortable and whatever they need to have, they've got. But the kingdom of God is way beyond that. It's, it's just as D Jesus demonstrated. Yes. He was always reaching out. He was always looking for the good of others. Yes. He wanted to heal. He wanted to deliver. Yes. He wanted to feed. He was working the kingdom of God in a way that others could see his father as the generous God that he is. That's right. You know, and a poverty mindset will always fear the future. 
mm. where a wealth mindset is just engaged in making, saying, listen, well, I'm going to bring glory to God, yes. you know, and I'm going to make history so yeah. that there's a testimony. Right. So it's totally a different way of thinking. So a wealth mindset reveals God's identity mm. because we are in Christ and our real yes, life sir. is hidden in Christ. Right. Now, rich people get their identity from things they own. Uh -huh. So in other words, I feel good about myself and I'm secure in myself because I have a great house, I've got many cars, I've got yachts, mm -hmm. I've got money. Mm -hmm. yeah. But wealthy people's identity is, uh, comes from who they are. Right. In other words, not what they own, right. but who they are yes. in Christ. Yes. Now, there's, there's nothing wrong with having nice things. Oh, no. They're, they're, no I no, mean, God wants Paul, us. Paul told Timothy, yes. command those who are rich in this yes. present age. He didn't say, tell them to get poor. Yes. He said, don't be haughty or mind handed because God gives you richly all things to enjoy. Yes. So, you know, he's not saying get rid of the yacht and get rid of it. No. no, but make sure it's in the right place. Yes. And but be, then he says, but be generous, mm. be ready to give, ready to share. Mm -hmm. And isn't that what he was talking to when he spoke to the rich young ruler? Let, let's go have a look at that. I want you to see this because this will help you see the difference in a mindset. And when you look at the, the rich young ruler, remember that guy Yeah, in Mark chapter 10, verse 17 says, as Jesus was going on the road, one came running. Now you cross-reference that. It talks about a young ruler and you'll see that he's, he's very rich in stuff. And he says, good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So he is looking for the answer. Now Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God, that, 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 but one that is God. You know the commandments. And he says, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. Now, he answered and said to him, Teacher, all things I've kept from my youth. Now, when you go back and you count how many Jesus did there, uh, number one, do not commit adultery, two, three, four, five, six, with honor your father and mother. Mm. Right off the bat, we know there's at least ten commandments, plus all the other instructions. Jesus didn't list everything. Yeah. So, th this is my opinion. Yeah. Uh, there's no scripture to confirm this. But I think Jesus highlight, he nailed the ones that he knew this guy yes. was really, because sometimes we, we say, I, you know, there's areas in my life that I've got right. Uh -huh. and, I, and I, yes, I've got that figured out. I've, so there are things I'm sorting out, but when I think of if I'm a good person or not, I have this little checklist that I go, yes, 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 yes. And I, these things don't seem that important. And I think Jesus focused on that list yes. and he's got, because he, he, yeah, he says, I, I, yeah, I, I did all of that. And then Jesus says, looks at him and loves him. And he says, one thing you lack. One thing you lack. And that's an amazing statement to consider that uh, I always ask people, how many of you would like if Jesus walked in here in his flesh and bone body and said, do you mind if I take all the things where you're struggling, all the things that you're <laughs> battling with, all the things that you're not doing, do you mind yeah. if I publicly call them out? Uh -huh. uh, uh, no, because <laughs> you know it's not just one yeah, thing. No, definitely. But he says, yeah, there's one thing you do lack. Uh -huh. He says, go your way, sell whatever you have, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come take up your cross and follow me. Mm. Now, right there, it sounds like Jesus is telling him, give everything away and become poor. That's not what he's doing. Because he has a man who believes he was keeping the commandments. And Jesus brings the statement out. Then when you analyze it, you will see it actually highlights other aspects of understanding the kingdom of God because he says, sell what you have. He doesn't say give it away. Hmm. Sell. Yes. Now this man's already, he's, he's a businessman. That's why he's wealthy. Hmm. He knows how to work. So if he sells, you know he's going to make a profit. Yes. And the word is clear. If we're living under that commandment and it says, you say you're keeping the commandments, the first thing you're going to do with income is tithe. Yes. Okay, so now you're going to have to tithe. That mean, this man knows you must tithe. What will happen when you tithe? The windows of heaven will be open above you and pour out such blessing. There's not room enough to contain it. And then he says, give to the poor. 
Mm. Didn't say give it all away. It yes. said give. And when you give, what happens? It comes back. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. The word says when you give to the poor, you lend to God. He will repay it. So he's not getting rid of stuff yet. Jesus is actually setting him up for a provision, a heavenly yes. provision. Yes. And then take up your cross. Now you go and check out the rest of the scriptures. Every time Jesus said, come, follow me, that person became an apostle. This, Amen. Jesus was bringing him on to staff here. Yes. This is a job offer. Amen. And so now get a hold of that. I want you to go and activate your tithing. I want you to activate your giving and receiving. Mm, powerful. And I want you to follow my instructions. Mm. Mm -hmm. And what happened? He was sad at this word, went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Yes. His identity was in his stuff. That's right. And Jesus said, hey, listen, you're doing okay. So much so that I want you to come work with me. I want you to be an yeah. apostle. I'm going to disciple you. Yes. But I need to break you from a rich mindset yes. into a wealth mindset. Exactly. And he felt it very difficult to make that adjustment because his identity was so locked into his rich yes. that he walked away not only from uh, the, 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 the provision that day, yes. he walked away from an assignment with God. Yes. Exactly. And I don't want that to happen to me or no. you. No. And so we got to say, you know what? That's it. I'm not going to fall into the same trap. Now, you don't have to have lots of stuff to be here. Mm -hmm. This is just a case of saying, I refuse to be trapped in any kind of poverty or rich mindset. I'm stepping over to where Jesus says, I can operate freely in these things and see the provision. Yes. And that's a trap that many people of God has to avoid when they come out of a poverty mindset mm -hmm. on the journey to a wealth mindset where God, when they start applying the principles of God and the blessings come in material blessings yes. where they don't start identifying who they are in the stuff they are you know they they have in their lives which they didn't have before right so unfortunately people falling into that trap. That's the deceitfulness of riches. That's the deceitfulness of riches. And so the blessing that comes their way, they think it's all about them. Mm. But it's not all about us. No. It's about the kingdom. And yes. so they use the finances to, to serve themselves. In other words, the blessing becomes their toys and not the tools right. they need to have for the kingdom of God. Yeah. Well, you so. keep reading here, you will see where, where Jesus said, uh, verse 23, how hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. That's right. They can't operate in that system. Yeah. You see, people say, you see, rich people can't go to heaven. That's exactly. not what he's saying. Yes. The kingdom of God is this operation you're talking about. Exactly. And so you see the disciples, they were shocked. And they're amazed. So, oh, you know they're not coming from a... They're not poor. No. Because they, otherwise they would go, yes, amen. No, they, they, they have these riches he's talking about. But then he gets down here. Yeah, this is where the key is. Assuredly, verse 29, there's no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospel. Exactly. There's the key. For my sake and the gospel, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time? Not for uh -huh. heaven one day. Yes. Now in this time. But, and then he still, listen, I thank God he put that in there because that, that eliminates any skepticism. Houses, mm -hmm. brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and lands. So yes, there is a hundredfold return when you're involved with kingdom business. That's the key. I'm not giving to get the big land. I'm not giving to get the bigger car. I'm giving to preach the gospel. The result is the land exactly. and the increase. Yes. And he said, with persecutions. Yes. Know, people aren't always going to understand it. And in the age to come, eternal life. So Jesus is saying, yes, you have your eternal life, but I want you operating in a hundredfold now. Why? Because I found someone who's about kingdom business. Yes. And if they're about kingdom business, 
I can make everything flow through you and I know you'll keep using it for the kingdom. Yes, and, ex and that's the trap for rich, for, for people who put their trust in their riches. Mm. It clouds their hearts. So the light of the gospel cannot penetrate right. into, their, into their thinking, yes. into their hearts, to see what God is purposefully wanting to do in their lives. Right. Because they, their identity is situated and rooted in their achievements. How do they change that? How do they break out of that? Well, we have to root ourselves um, in, in our identity, in what God says about us. Our trust is in God. Jesus said, if we don't have childlike faith, hmm. we will not be able to enjoy the kingdom. Yes. <laughs> God wants us to enjoy the kingdom. That's right. And we, we shouldn't struggle to enjoy the kingdom. No. Jesus said, this is the work I want you to do. He says, believe in me. That's it. <laughs> God. He says, God don't struggle, don't fight. Yes. Don't just surrender. Yes. Believe in me. On the journey that I put you on, Jesus said, I will provide. Yes. I'll make sure you're okay. Yes. I'll make sure you provided for. You've got a roof over your head. You've got your, your transport is provided for. You've got the trips you need to do, the journeys you need to go on. I'll pay for it all and I'll give, even give you more. Well, but you just need to trust me. So isn't it's childlike this, faith. Isn't this true for you? I know I've spoken to quite a few people and asked them and they, they go, yes. Your biggest, think about this back where you're watching this. Just think, your biggest miracle, the things that, that really got you by surprise. You know, wow, God, you are awesome. You weren't even expecting it. Yes. And I if you were, it wasn't for today. You, you yeah. go, well, maybe. No, it, it surprised you. It got you so much like, what? This has to be God. And it caught you by surprise. It wasn't something yeah. you were like, got and then at last I got it. Because then yeah. it's, I got it. Yes. It's, it's, I found the things that I strived over, that's why I've, I've made a decision to stop it. Yeah. Is when I, God, I gotta get this, gotta get this, gotta get it, gotta get it. That thing never arrived. Yes. And that's when you get frustrated. <laughs> you say, God, what yeah. God, you hear me? Yeah. And nice. it's, it's almost like that stops. The, that, that blessing from manifesting. Yeah. But the moment you rest, and, and it's almost like, I actually don't care if it never happens. Yeah. And then when you're least thinking about it, <laughs> it's like God saying, watch this now. And but, that's when he gets the glory. That's right. And, and uh, wealthy people's money is just an expression of who they are. Hmm. Who they are in Christ. Right. Wealthy people are rich. <laughs> yes, sir. that's right. But they've got a wealthy mindset creating that's the true those riches, results the, and sustainable riches. Yes. Because it's based on their belief system. Mm -hmm. And they don't try and safeguard it because there's nothing to try and protect. It comes from a result of internal believing. Yes. Giving birth to the supply continuously. Right. Because... That's the way God created us to function. We don't need, it's good to have investments. It's good to, to prepare for things in your life. But we need to know in our hearts that God has got our future secure in His hands. Mm -hmm. So we just leave from, we, we live from that belief, settled in God, that God will take care of tomorrow. And we He's promised to, it. Yeah, yeah, and he's promised he it. has given and us if, the promise. And if he asks us to, to sow that investment, which we put aside, we can sow it confidently because we know God is God was the source of the investment. In the first place. In the first place. Yes. So we can let, let it go yeah. because he's our source. Absolutely. Our assets is not our source. Yeah. And we cannot put our trust in our assets. Yeah. And then we've stepped over to where God makes grace abound. Well, we're out of time and we've got some other things we'd like to share with you. I'll see you right after this. The law didn't introduce the tithe. Abraham tithe. Why? Because he was blessed. Understanding the revelation of the blessing tithe will help you tithe out of a motivation of love for God rather than out of fear or condemnation. He wasn't blessed because he tithed. He tithed because he was blessed. Yeah. In this powerful series, Alan Back reveals the truth about tithing that the enemy has tried so hard to keep hidden. If you get this, 
Your whole Bible will change. You will learn of the power in honoring God's tithe and how to trust God with your finances and experience the absolute greatness of God. God gives seed to the sower. In this series, Alan Back will help you discover one of the most powerful principles God has made available to us. Your seed will not give up on you. Seed never gives up. You will learn how to accurately apply the powerful principle of seed in every area of your life, as well as how to experience God's abundance that comes with His blessing. The success of the harvest is not dependent on the seed, it's dependent on my heart. Build your faith in the area of the tithe and the seed so that you can enjoy the abundant life that comes with God's blessing. Contact us here at Allen Bank Ministries by making use of any of our details. This revelation of the blessing tithe has so transformed so many people's lives because the enemy sometimes, you know, if he can't hide a truth, he'll try and smoke it out, uh, put it behind a smoke screen so that we're not able to see it. And that's the problem is that very often when you see a truth of God, God's kingdom doesn't come by information. It comes by revelation. And if you took one verse on its own, it could say a multitude of things. And everybody would be right in their interpretation because it could be read in different ways. And then you take another scripture and you could read it in different ways together as well. But when you put them together, there's a revelation that comes out of the word that is not always exactly right. It's like the example I always use, let's say you have a big piece of a uh, puzzle. You know, there's multi-piece puzzles and you find a little piece and it's, and it's blue and you can see the little piece of a, of, of, of a, of a of a bird wing or whatever and your immediate assumption blue with a bird's wing must be sky and you could prove it's sky but when you build the whole puzzle and the only piece left is in the lake you can argue that this is sky but then you look at it in the picture the whole thing you realize no there's the sky there's the bird oh this is the reflection of the bird in the lake so this is actually a lake piece and you pop it in. So all those years I thought it was a, a sky piece. Meanwhile, it's a lake piece. And that's true with many scriptures. When you read it on its own, you could think that's a, a piece of the sky. But when you look at the whole word of God, you realize he's talking about the lake. And that revelation comes through. And that's true with the tithe as well. If you just look at under the old covenant, it could look like a law thing. But when you look at God's kingdom and his God's system, how he operates everything else, then you see the power of the tithe and how it's going to work in your life. When you get that revelation, man, you step out with a whole new understanding of it. And then when you tithe, you genuinely are in that place of an open heaven with the blessing flowing. And then, of course, when that happens, your seed begins to work. Now, when you sow your seed, you're not just flinging it out there. It's going into a kingdom system and that seed is designed to produce. So get those two. It's going to help renew your mind in that area, and you can walk in it fully. Now, my friend, if you've not yet given your life to Jesus, I want you to know He loves you. He died for you. He gave His life so that you could have life. And if this is the first time you're hearing it, or even if you've heard it before, but you've never yet prayed, I want you to make the decision right now. It's not by accident that you're watching this program. God's calling you home today. And the Word says, if you believe with your heart that Jesus is raised from the dead, confess with your mouth that He's your Lord and Savior, you will be saved. And so I want to lead you in that prayer. Let's do it now. Just say this out loud while you're watching, wherever you are. Just say it so that you can hear it. Say this with me. Dear Jesus, thank you. You died for me and I believe it. You paid for my sin in full. And then you rose from the dead. Today you are alive. And as my living God, I call you Lord, my Savior. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. And I'm living for you. From this day on, I serve you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God, my friend. You are a child of God. Now, I've got something that's going to help encourage your faith. This is a card that explains to you what happens when you become a Christian and some guidelines just as you go in your next days ahead. 
This study program is going to help you, guide you through your Bible that by the end of a year you will have read it cover to cover. Isn't that exciting? This CD, My Christian Passport, Out of This World of Failure into His Kingdom of Victory, are scriptures that as you speak them over and over out loud with me while you're listening to it, you say what I say on here and you're going to see your faith grow and develop. Now that's our free gift to you. I want to sow that into your life. If you can call me on that phone number, write us at the address over there. As soon as we got your details, we'll send that to you and we'll be with you in a few days time. Well, that's all we got time for today. And we're going to get together again tomorrow with Didier Tisson. Thank you so much, Didier. We are Thank growing you, in the things of God. Just can't wait for the next program. Amen. We will be with you there. This is Alan Bagg reminding you Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Visit Alan Bagg Ministries online. At alanbaggministries.org, you can find out more about Alan Bagg, the call of God on his life, and more about who we are as a ministry. On our website, you will also be able to connect with us by making use of our contact details. You will also find out about the heartbeat of Allen Bag Ministries and how you can know Jesus as Lord and Savior. You can also make use of our easy to use giving facilities on our website and get involved in the many projects and ways available. Through the grace of God, Allen Bag Ministries help many to get through the challenges they face on a daily basis. And our heart is to help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org and let us help you identify and succeed in what the Lord has called you to do. Allen Bag Ministries is making this week of programs available for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, you are now able to purchase this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. This week's Wisdom for Life programs are available in digital format, so purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us at any of our details.